everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. It was a very wet, dreary kind of day when it started out. It was raining when I when I opened it up for the chickens to let them out, and the ground is still kind of soggy and wet, and it's not very pretty. Then the sun came out, and it was actually warmer outside than it was in the house, and so I went and sat outside. And while I was sitting outside, I was listening to videos, so if I didn't comment on your videos, because I was just listening, I used the earbuds and I connect you to my iPod, pod, iPad. 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 I wear the iPod to keep account of my steps. Okay, I had you connected to the iPad. And while I was out there, I was thinking, gee whiz, I went upstairs to find, I went upstairs to find, what day? oh, I went upstairs looking for a, a larger crochet hook and when I went up there I ended up finding this. It's got mistakes in it. I can see this color differentiation difference. It's not supposed to be wide here. I can see that. Oh, I don't know. But anyways, this is something that um, was up there and I thought, how the heck do we do this? And I, I can't remember. I think this was something that either my mother started or somebody started and it's done with a double-sided hook. So it's sort of like the Tunisian crocheting, but it's a little bit different. Whereas you're supposed to have, like, a, this side would be like a dark side, and this side would be like a light side. You're supposed to be able to have two-toned um, thing. Well, anyways, I was trying to figure it out. And I crochet so much tighter. I feel like I'm learning again, because when you're first learning... Your tension on your on your yarn is so tight, and when you know exactly what you're doing, it seems to loosen up. You can control it better. Well, I was doing that, and I was trying to figure it out. And, and you and were I, just learning. And I was just learning. <laughs> That's right. And this is the yarn that was with it, and it was in little baggies. I also was enjoying. I showed you that um, Tunisian hot pad or. Called a, it's called a washcloth, but it looks more like a hot pad. And I thought, you know, I want to try and do a bunch of little ones together. So I I did this. It's just is it so? It's just pretty. <laughs> it's not for anything. And I and it curls and it curls nice. I was thinking I could tie it around the neck of one of my bears as a tie or something. But it's that the kids have upstairs we have a couple teddy bears it would look kind of cute on that where it's it looks it's pretty it's just pretty then i was thinking you know this i did in a straight line which is which is fine a straight line is good but then i saw this afghan i didn't bring the paper in to tell you what kind it is but they were doing this other stitch where i'll take i i was using a crochet hook and i my Stitches are so tight. It makes it so hard for me. But anyways, it was done where you, this is the, this is the right side. It's done where you, you keep going, and it's, it's a circular thing. It's where you keep going and keep going, and then you add another. You can, it's usually two-toned. But I was going, and it's got seven, seven stitches to a block, and five rows, and five, six, seven. The sides outside in the starting row is counted after, but the actual rows are five, and then the outside is one, seven, six, and the other outside is seven. So it's a it's a magic number of seven, is what the guy kept saying. And so I was trying this, but I've got to get a bigger hook because this one I was using the eye, and like I said, I start to get so tight I can't even get the the hook through, and that's pretty pretty bad because I've crocheted for many, 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 many years and I've never had that trouble. But this has been really difficult. But this is what I've been doing besides listening to the videos. So while I'm listening to the videos or listening to people in their live streams, I'm not really, I'm just listening. And then I, then I go on to something else and I forget to comment. So what happens when you're busy with your hands. I don't even drink my coffee. My coffee gets cold as ice. And then I have to heat it up again and then I forget that I have it again and it gets cold as ice and so I keep heating it up and keep not drinking it. 
think I woke and up then, a coffee head for three and a half hours. I probably did. And then I and then I put it in the microwave and forget that I put it in the microwave and oh it's it's crazy. But it's because you're so focused on what you're trying to do that you, you forget that other stuff. Um, I'm going to put a little clip in. I think I'm going to put it in right here. I just want to show you. Whoa, Rosie just ran out. I was going to show you the difference in size. There's the um, second group of babies. And... There's the first group of babies. They're running from me. There, there, there's Rosie. Rosie is a girl, definitely a girl. And Andy, you're a boy. There they go. And see, she, they're almost the size of their mamas. They're getting there. And then, this is the size of the little ones. Hi, Emma. I'm just taking a little picture. That was a clip of the the chickens. I'm trying to show you the difference in sizes. Whoops, I just kicked the camera. Hope that didn't show up. I don't know. You wouldn't know. I it bonked it is yeah, what it was. Right. My foot did. Because I, I had my ankles crossed and I usually like to cross my knees. And you know, if you cross your knees it'll raise your blood pressure. Did you know that? That's why they say cross at the ankles. Um, I have low blood pressure, so I guess it's okay for me to cross at the, at the knee. And also, if you have blood clots, it's a bad thing to do to cross at the knee. It's better to cross at the ankles. And when I was growing up, my mother used to insist that you cross at the ankles. Because when you sat, you sat with, you sat on, sort of on the edge of the chair. You don't sit all the way back. And you crossed your ankles. And you held your, and there's a special way to hold your hands even, instead of, and you hold your hands like this so that your fingertips are pointing upward and in your lap. And that is how a lady sits, is what my mother used to always tell us. So we would cross our ankles and hold our hands in our lap like this with your fingertips going up like your nails are going to grow upward. Well, I don't have any nails because I cut them all off, but... That's what she taught us. So that's your tip for the day, I guess, how to sit and how to hold your hands. And I will talk to you all again tomorrow. So you have a great night. Bye-bye.